Despite camera stability improving with things like gimbals, stabilized lenses, and even stabilized sensors, there's still one accessory that every video or filmmaker needs, and that is the Fluid Head Tripod. Today, we go faster, deeper, and yet oh so smoother into fluid heads than you ever thought possible. So without further ado, let's do this. First up, why are fluid heads called as such? Well, they're called that because inside the pan and tilt pivot axes are sealed module discs. And inside that, you're going to find wafers of metal or concentric circles of metal. And they will house a, generally, a silicone-based grease. And that grease is your fluid. Now, it is the amount of space that that fluid is allowed to pass through that will inform the drag on that module. For fluid heads that are designed for heavier camera systems of say 40 or 50 pounds or greater, you're likely going to see a stacked module system, which means that each module has a different level of drag. And using mathematics, when you combine certain ones, you're able to vary the amount of drag that you experience to a very precise level and have a certain amount of strength designed for those heavier camera systems. Okay, we're gonna just stop there for a second because while I was preparing for this video, I spent about two to three weeks, you know, trying to hunt down some experts and uh, go online, try to look for as much information about how the mechanics of fluid heads actually work. And for the most part, I think I got that right. However, as I was backing up the footage and you know, just getting ready to start uh, editing this video, uh, I spent a little bit of time just on Google and Google patents and I came across a Satchler and an O'Connor patent um, that was pretty interesting and that kind of told a bit of a different story. And so there's two methods. One is sort of this uh, quasi friction system which uh, uses uh, two wafers and as the wafers kind of come closer together uh, they reduce the area that the grease can travel through and so as you turn the knob the wafers kind of close in on each other um, and creating more drag. So that's one system that's different than what I've told you. Um, the second one is just a single module that's sealed and as you can see from right behind me here um, and it's got uh, multiple wafers inside and a pin that will actually um, select certain wafers to to wafers to move um, and you know through that system you can have different levels of drag as the pin selects different wafers so now back to the regular video however when you're dealing with fluid heads that are designed for much smaller camera packages like a mirrorless camera or a light video camera then you're likely going to see what is as best called a hybrid fluid friction system which means that there'll be a single module typically concentric circles and then they will just apply a friction to it when you sort of tighten it down. And that is great for lighter systems. It's cheap, which is great. Uh, makes it a really accessible technology for everybody. But of course, those types of things can potentially wear out over time. But often, the bigger issue is that when you use a heavier camera on them, it's less precise and it's more sort of wobbly and fidgety. There's no real way to tell which your fluid head is, whether it's a full fluid stack system or a fluid friction system. But I've found personally that you can kind of make a guess based on the weight that the fluid head is supposed to carry. So you look at the weight limitations of it, and if it's somewhere between 30 to 100 pounds plus, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be a stacked fluid system. Uh, when you're looking at some economical ones, say fluid heads that are under $300 and they're designed for really light cameras, then it's probably a good assumption to make that it's going to be a fluid friction system. Another element inside of a fluid head are going to be the counterbalance springs. And as the name would suggest, they allow you to counterbalance the weight of your camera system. And we're going to talk about why that's important in just a short moment. But before we do, it's important that you know right now that every fluid head comes with a weight range. And the counterbalance springs aren't there to help you exceed the weight of your camera system and to offset that. Uh, they're designed specifically for the weight range of that fluid head. So it's absolutely vital that you buy the fluid head that is right for your entirely built out camera package. We're gonna get into some details that will help you if you're about to buy or use a camera fluid head. But before we do, I wanna show you how to balance your camera on the fluid head itself. Early in a lot of videographers' careers or filmmakers, they will just take the camera and they'll plug it on the fluid head and just start shooting. And I assure you, that is not how a fluid head is designed to be used. The camera must be balanced on the fluid head. And that's for two reasons. One is kind of the most obvious, which means that if you have a perfectly balanced fluid head, it's going to require the least amount of effort for you to manipulate the camera. So you're gonna get smoother shots, better shots, more accurate shots. 
The second is actually even more important, which means that if I unlock the tilt axis, a perfectly balanced camera will stay in place as I tilt it throughout the tilt range. So no matter where I place it, the camera will hold its position. And that is because the goal of a properly balanced fluid head is so that the camera's mass exerts zero force on the tripod itself. Early in my career, I would walk away from my camera with the tilt unlocked because I was thinking about a bunch of other things. I'm guilty as charged just like everybody else. And you know what happens? The camera starts doing this and then someone screams. So I want you to avoid doing that. It's very important that you balance your camera system. So let's get into that. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to start by saying that whether you have a light camera package or a heavy one, uh, the step-by-step -step here is virtually identical um, and so you can follow along regardless of what your camera system is. The first thing that we're going to do is that we are going to take the control handle that's on the right hand rosette here and we're just going to reset it into sort of a basic position. Whether the bend goes towards the down to the floor or whether the bend kind of goes up towards the sky is a personal preference. It's up to you uh, when you're setting it in sort of a base position. but uh, uh, generally, you will change this relative to your body depending on the camera move you need to make and where you happen to be relative to the camera. If you have any other sort of suggestions about why you want it this way or that way, I'd love to hear it. Please uh, put that in the comment section below. I'm really eager to hear everyone's thoughts on this because sometimes I get in arguments with other DPs about this. Um, some think it's important, some don't. Uh, so we're going to just make sure that that's locked down nice so it allows us to control the camera when we're balancing it. The next thing we want to do is we want to level the uh, bowl that we have here. And there's a tie down uh, that's on the base here. So what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that your drag is on zero and make sure that your springs are on zero. And I'm just going to do that and I'm going to lift this forward. I prefer to do this because I get a clear sight of the uh, bubble here. And a lot of bubbles you can press and will light up if you're in a dark environment. And I can just now loosen the tie down and make sure that the bubble is right dead center and make sure my tie down is nice and snug. Okay, once I do that, I can return this back to its horizontal position. Now we wanna set it up to place our camera on it. And for this, we're actually gonna to go to maximum drag because we want as much resistance as we place our camera on it. So maximum drag on the pan as well. And then we're going to set up uh, our springs to be at 50%. So in this particular model of a satchel head, um, we have 1 through 16, so I'm just going to place on 8, somewhere in the middle, uh, as a starting point for us. And I'm going to then make sure that my pan axis is locked and my tilt axis is locked. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my camera. And when I grab my camera, I want to figure out where is the average balance point of my camera. It doesn't have to be super precise, but we want a general area to start with. And so we're going to pick the camera up. Uh, if you've got a handle on your camera, you can pick it up by its handle. And uh, just by kind of holding your hand there, you're going to see that it's not drooping one way or the other, which means that my balance point tends to be pretty much right where my hand is. Uh, you can just sort of hold it like this too, uh, however you want to do it, and we know that that's going to be our center point. So I'm going to then place my camera on here. Okay, and uh, now what we're going to do is I know that my camera balance point is about here. And if I go straight down, we can see the balance point of the fluid head itself. Um, it's a little bit forward of that. So I want to now unlock this plate here will slide and if you've got a dovetail system like a Manfrotto plate the attachment and the plate itself is all in one so you'll just slide that back and forth as you need but this one has the actual marks um, and I'm just going to eyeball it here a little bit of a guess to say that it's there okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to Keeping my hand on the handle, I'm going to put my drag to zero in the tilt. I'm going to loosen this. I'm just going to see how it reacts. Pretty good, right? And you're going to see if I placed it back in that position where it was before, when three, and then I lock that down, you will see it's going to want to dip forward, right? And by having our springs at 50%, uh, it prevents it from just flopping straight down. You can actually see that if I move it to the zero position here, that the, it's just going to drop all the way to that position. So we want to avoid having that happen, and having our springs at 50% will prevent that. To initiate the springs, you do have to just do a quick motion here, and the springs will engage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lock this 
place it back in that balanced position around five. I'm going to just double check that. Oh, see it's dipping a little bit backwards. So I've gone a little too far and let's say four and a half. Still dipping a little backwards and there. And still dipping a little backwards. Maybe I wasn't so far off after all. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, engage, and there we go, yep. We're going to engage our uh, tilt drag. And I like to go just 50%. I don't like to go all the way, just to get a sense. And then you'll feel that, you'll just motion it uh, back and forth and you'll feel the, uh, all the modules sort of kick in. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it. Again, the tilt lock is off. We're gonna test it by placing it down like this. And we can see that it's actually motioning back up. It's not holding its position. That means the springs are too strong. They're actually fighting against the camera. So I'm gonna go back down a level here. And I'm going to test again. Now that's holding pretty well. And that's holding pretty well. So it's actually right at 50%. I, if I just held it at 50, I would have been fine if I didn't move it. And uh, then I lock it down and we are ready to go. And then we can adjust as well our pan. Right now I've got my pan at maximum, um, but I can kind of move it in the middle and then adjust it for whatever shot we're about to do. And lock it down. Make sure everything's locked before you walk away. And that is simply how you balance a camera on a fluid head. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about all the different ways that your camera can attach to the fluid head. But before we do that, I wanna talk about how the fluid heads themselves can attach to the tripod base. And there's only two ways really that they can do that. The most popular method, and the first method I'm gonna show you, is the bowl system. And the bowl system incorporates a ball sort of system into a matching bowl that is anywhere between 75 millimeters to 150 millimeters. And a great example of that is my Cam Gears fluid head here. This is the V10. This is an amazing fluid head, especially when you consider the price. Um, and it's got a 100 millimeter bowl. And this is the tie down here. So if I'm just gonna unscrew the tie down and bring in the sticks here, uh, and you're gonna find the 100 millimeter adaptable bowl and I'll place it on. Now this is a great system for single shooters um, where you're doing dock work or events, um, any sort of indie filmmaking, uh, that type of thing where you're just, one operator is responsible for kind of getting the camera moved around and um, leveling the camera, that type of thing. So systems where the camera is about 50 pounds or less, um, this is a uh, great system. Uh, even though the stronger, the larger bowls, like 150 millimeters, can hold a considerable amount of weight. The downside, of course, becomes that as a single operator, uh, trying to level a camera that's super, super heavy, once you loosen that tie down, you're going to be fighting the weight of the camera. And then there's also the risk that, you know, if you don't really tighten it down super tight, and even if you do, that the bowl can slip. And so for heavier camera packages, you're going to need another system. And that other system is the Mitchell mount or the flat mount. Now, I don't have one of those with me at the moment, but I'm going to put a picture up on the screen so you can see what that looks like. And the Mitchell mount is advantageous when you're dealing with much heavier camera packages, when typically you have an assistant or a couple assistance um, to move the camera around. Um, the Mitchell mount is a much more secure system. You don't have bowl slippage that you're gonna have to worry about. Um, so you can place much heavier cameras on there. The downside of course with that is that all the leveling has to be done with the legs and it's a lot more time consuming um, just to get it perfect and get it right. There are some wedges that are available that you can go between the sticks and the fluid head and that allow you to do some micro adjusting for the leveling and speeds up the time a little bit. For, for the most part, if you're gonna run into the flat mount system or the Mitchell system, you're going to be leveling typically with the tripod legs. The advantage, of course, with the Mitchell system, in addition to the weight, is that you will uh, be able to place the camera a lot lower because now you're removing the ball. Uh, you're still gonna have a little tie down, but uh, generally you're gonna save yourself about four to five inches so you can get much lower shots uh, than you can with the ball mount. And it's also more adaptable to some of the bigger elements that we find in the filmmaking world like Chapman dollies and a lot of remote heads uh, will use the flat mount system. So moving from uh, tripod 
to say a Chapman dolly is a lot quicker um, or it's the only method at all that you can use is you have to go with a flat mount system. There are more and more opportunities now and more and more equipment out there that take a bowl system um, but still on a larger scale with heavier camera packages you're going to have to stick with the flat mount. But for most of you you're going to be in the world of the sort of ball and uh, and bowl system and that's going to give you 90% or 99% of anything you're ever going to need as an independent filmmaker for example. When it comes to quick release or attachment plates there are a number of systems uh, and we're going to start with the lightest and move our way up. Now if you're shooting with mirrorless, DSLR or light video cameras then there's a very good chance you've come in contact with this system. It's the most popular and it is sort of the dovetail sliding dovetail um, system and it was uh, I believe developed by Manfrotto uh, also called the Manfrotto plate sliding Manfrotto and uh, this is just on our cam gear here um, but it's uh, you're gonna see that it allow you to do both uh, quarter 20 and 3 eighths um, but um, it's uh, the best system in terms of including all in one so you don't have to build a sliding assembly balance assembly on the uh, flute head itself because you can use the plate itself to achieve balance and attachment in one so if I take our black magic camera here and I take our quarter 20 thread um, and I adapt this and I get my screwdriver, also good if you have a coin or a washer in your pocket. Um, I prefer screwdrivers, always have a screwdriver in your kit along with those extra quarter 20, 3 8 screws and hex keys. Um, there we go. So nice and secure on there. And now it will just slide in from the back and it's got a protection so that if anything were to happen, it won't slide off the rail entirely. Um, the advantage of course with this is that it's all kind of in one system um, and you can quickly sort of align it and balance it and away you go. The downside of course with this system is sometimes numerous. One is that you're going to find more and more these days people are building out their mirrorless cameras. They're adding cages, they're adding uh, shoulder rigs, they're adding follow focus and mat boxes and all of this sort of stuff. And once you add all of that stuff to the front of this camera, um, it often drops down lower, especially handles and like screws and things like that. And as you go to remove this out the back, they're going to catch on the front and it's not going to allow you to remove your um, camera. So you're going to have to remove all of that stuff just to get your camera off which makes sort of swapping uh, from handheld to sticks to gimbal a lot more time consuming, a lot more frustrating because sometimes you don't even know what's catching. The wedges can also tend to get a little bit off center from time to time and worn out and I've had problems in the past with multiple systems that use this sort of dovetail that it's just like I'm fighting, it's stuck and I'm pressing buttons and it's not coming out. So it's really really frustrating in that particular respect. Um, but you know, for what you pay for and what you get, it's a great system. It is fairly reliable and it handles the light camera systems uh, quite well. Um, and you're going to save a ton of cash by going with this system. Now, if you do need to move quicker on set and you are running heavier camera systems, then you're going to need to step up to a different system. And that system is the wedge plate. Now, the wedge plate is just a center plate that drops in and out. So you have just the indent here and you've got your small little plate uh, with both a 3 8 and quarter 20. So we're just going to grab our DVX 200 here and line these guys up. And the way this will go in is just by towing in and then the latch will catch. So the back end drops down and catches in and it's quite secure. Then that's going to mean though that you're going to have a separate sliding plate which will have a dropout handle here and that will allow you to move the plate back and forth so that you can balance your camera. To remove it you just pull a pin, safety pin and slide it to the side and that comes right out. So you can imagine that if you are running a very fast paced set, shooting dock, going from handheld to tripod, handheld to tripod, uh, all that type of things, this is a system that no matter how you got the camera rigged it's going to come off and on very quickly. Um, and so it's going to save you a lot of time on set. Now when we get into larger camera systems you are going to see a return of the dovetail system and in this particular case the dovetails are quite large to handle cameras like an Ari Alexa for example um, but they are a, more of a quick release, they're sort of a hybrid between the wedge 
and the small dovetail in that they drop in and out, not slide from front to back, um, but then do allow for positioning within that plate. Now there's another option that you have once you get a any sort of system, whether you have a dovetail or whether you have a um, wedge plate system, is to add a VCT system. And the VCT is a, a really another great system because if you're going from handheld to uh, your sticks, you're going to want a system that often offers a, a, a nice pad for your shoulder um, so that the wedge plate doesn't get uh, in the way. Typically with things like the FS7, for example, that have a built-in little shoulder pad. Uh, if you were to put a small dovetail system on here, what will happen is based on where it has to mount, it's gonna cut into that pad and into your shoulder. You're gonna need to wear some sort of shoulder pad um, just to compensate for that. But more professionally and more common, you're gonna see this system. And this system uses what's called a VCT plate system. And so you're gonna have a shape rig here, for example, but you don't necessarily have to have a shoulder rig for this. Um, you've got, if I pull that off, um, you're going to have two attachment points and they're little wedges. You've got a front wedge here and then a receiving wedge uh, sort of back here. And uh, it's really, really secure. I just drop this in and because it attaches front and back, it's a much more secure system um, and it will hold in well. And it allows me to just with a release, basically throw that on my shoulder. Um, and so the big score here is that the plate doesn't get in the way and I have a comfortable shoulder system. So you don't necessarily need to go to shape. There's a lot of other manufacturers, but uh, you're going to see that the VCT system is really popular. And when you're attaching your VCT, you're going to do that simply uh, on the bottom, just like you would with any other camera system. So I've got it here on the wedge plate and I've just attached it both with the quarter 20 and the three eighths. And so same with the wedge plate. I can just drop this in. So we can adapt this to any other system that we need to. The last point on fluid heads I wanna make is just simply with designs. Now my heart goes out to all you left-handed folks out there. You do live in a right-handed world and fluid heads are sort of designed for right-hand operation, which means that your right hand actually remains on the control arm and that your left hand is free to operate any of sort of the adjustment controls. The best designs will place all these adjustment controls primarily on the left-hand side or in the back. Um, but I have seen some other fluid heads that have some of the controls on the right-hand side. And in a perfect world, you don't want to go there. It's really frustrating because that means you're going to have to do some sort of hand jive business or reach around or reach under. And I've found that incredibly frustrating in the past. So I prefer fluid heads like the Satchler where just everything is right at my hand here and I don't have to let my hand off the, the control here. Um, there is one exception on, on a brand like this or many others where is the sliding plate here for balance. The lock and unlock is on the right hand side and in the front. Um, I can actually reach that uh, with my left hand very easily if I wanted to. So it's not really an issue, but it's also not an issue because when you're doing this, the fluid head is locked and it's just a balance point before you start operating. So functionally, it doesn't really matter that that's on the right hand side. So I want you to pay attention to those things, look for those types of things when you're about to buy or use a fluid head and that will determine um, if that's the right fluid head for what you're trying to do. All right, to close things out, I would be remiss if I didn't spend even a small amount of time talking about tripod legs. Now, there's a lot of variety on the market when it comes to tripod legs, but the design ideology behind all of them are virtually identical. And that means that there is a trade-off uh, and a balance to be achieved between something that is sort of lightweight and market accessible uh, than to something that has high degree of functionality, but uh, is you know not quite mobile to say the least. I wanna show you a few examples of what that kind of looks like. Um, some very popular examples. If you're starting out, you're likely going to be going with something like like this is the Mark VI from Cam Gear. I really love it. It's an amazing fluid head. Um, and you're going to see this design on a lot of uh, sort of entry level um, uh, fluid heads and tripods. Uh, it's just a sort of a screw type system. Um, and when I say sort of entry level, I mean that the screw type system is fairly small and compact. It's designed to be compact uh, so that you can pack it. it, it travels well, that type of thing. The downside, of course, is that when it's something small that it takes more con you know, concentrated effort to uh, make sure that it's nice and snug and that you've got a good grip on it, um, especially if you're shooting in cold environments with sort of big mitts or gloves. You may actually have to take those mitts and gloves off just to make sure that this is nice and snug. And um, as well as it can feel snug, but over time, especially as it starts to wear, wear out a bit, uh, it may not be snug enough and you may start to get a little bit of drift or, or, or dip in it and you have to be uh, sort of 
of hyper conscious. Um, so the amount of time that you know each one of these takes is a bit time consuming. And, and if you're shooting in a fast paced environment, even like things like weddings, uh, reception, you're moving around, you're adjusting things really quick, um, having to do both stages, you know, because this is a you know every tripod sort of has two stages. You gotta you know undo this one, and then you know come around, tighten that, and then you gotta do this, and then come around, tighten that, and you've got to do that three times. Um, it's going to become quite frustrating over time. So you really have to ask yourself, how much am I shooting? What are the environments that I'm shooting in? How fast do I need to move? And then that should dictate whether this is the right tripod for you. Certainly if you're traveling or doing um, you know, that type of thing, then this is a really great thing because it packs up so small and it's fairly lightweight in your luggage. When it comes to something a little bit more robust, um, if we look here at my V10 by Cam Gear, um, this is a great tripod. You're going to see this across the board, uh, used a ton in ENG, so news gathering, doc, um, even indie filmmaking, that type of thing. And it's just a lot system. So the lot system is sort of very ubiquitous in the industry, just kind of like a trombone. Um, and you can imagine that, you know, even with the two stage design, we've got another stage down here, um, that to be able to operate it is remarkably fast. You know, one, two, boom, boom, boom. Um, I can undo all three, clack, 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 raise it, clack, 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 close it. Uh, it works really, really quickly that way. So uh, I prefer to use this method. Um, this is something you're gonna see across manufacturers, a very popular device. Um, the only thing that I want to sort of advise people when it comes to this is that when we typically go with tripods like this, we're also doing things like adding um, jib control arms. And when you're adding the weight of not just a heavier camera package and your fluid head, but now this control arm plus the counterbalance weights, that it's a significant amount of weight for your tripod base. Um, that may also mean that you're gonna need to get bottom spreaders, that type of thing that it will, you know, you have to consider the ground that it's going on. Um, but also just these fixed friction latches. Um, so pay attention to the maximum payload that your tripod can handle, not just from the physical body, but also it's friction latches um, because you don't wanna put this big heavy weight on and even if you've cranked this down, you know, you may start to see some slippage uh, within the control arm. So uh, these can all be adjusted in a lot of different uh, tripod brands and it's a good idea to have a hex cat hex key set, sorry, uh, with you so that you can make some adjustments to your tripod legs um, on set or uh, on location. But uh, generally speaking, this is the most one of the most popular methods and um, once you use these, it's hard to go back to sort of a, a twist knob system. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you guys is uh, a system that I have some experience with recently. I just shot a film and we used uh, the Flowtech from Satchler on it and uh, I quickly fell in love with this tripod because you've got one latch system for both leg stages. So no longer do you have to do one stage down there, one stage up here. It's also ca carbon fiber. So in terms of, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You get uh, a very lightweight tripod, um, but it's also great for just a single shooter. So if you're just out on location, you're in the wilderness, wherever you are, um, you can just single operate this um, very, very easily because this single latch operates both stages. So um, I can get it as high and as low as I want uh, with a huge amount of ease and with very little uh, assistance. Um, so I really love this. Um, it's certainly an investment and if you're shooting a lot and you're shooting in fast paced environments and you're traveling a lot uh, as a DP for example, then this is something that is well worth its weight in gold when you're doing that type of thing. Um, so the, the, the end message is really you need to know What's your camera package? Where am I shooting? How fast pace of environment am I in? And that's gonna dictate both what fluid head that you get and what uh, tripod base that you're gonna go with. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks guys so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to our channel and like us on all the internet things. Uh, all that is down below. And uh, comment in our comment section below. I'd love to hear what your experience is with tripods and fluid heads and any advice that you have, uh, that you've had, um, that I think the community could benefit from. So again, guys, thanks so much for watching. Go out there and happy shooting.